Wow, we're on lesson 41 now. And lesson 41 through 45 are the most important lessons in your entire book. Why do I say this? Because all of ancient history points up to this time. And all of today's modern history points back to this time. Can you guess? Oh, yes. It's the birth of a baby in Bethlehem. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yes. In Galatians 4.4 4 in our Bible, it says, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son. Yes, the fullness of time was right in the midst. This is where time changes. <laughs> For our history, way back from the beginning, <clears throat> man had a problem. His problem was sin. And man, as you kind as you can see, going through the ancient history all the way up to Rome, needed a savior. And today, we need a savior. And that savior is that anticipated Messiah. The savior, the anointed one, the chosen one, God incarnate, God man, God came in the flesh to dwell with us to live his life a pure life and to die on the cross, a death for us to take our death penalty. And then he rose again to give us that ticket to know that anticipation that we have hope, everlasting hope that Jesus conquered death, everlasting hope in the resurrection that we'll be resurrected someday with him. What good news in a hopeless world. And if you've been following along with me, it's quite a hopeless world in ancient history all the way up into modern history today. Look around. Don't we need a savior? Yes, we do. I'm so glad that Jesus is my savior. And I pray that he is your savior. So now let's talk about Lesson 41. And so far in history, um, we've talked about kings and leaders, and we've talked about um, important events and um, things that happen, wars and all these things. Um, but no emperor, no empire, no brilliant invention comes close to this importance. No single event has more significance than Jesus. There's this little uh, poem, like I should say, that I read many years ago, and it's called One Solitary Life. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of these things one usually associates with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliament that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put all to put together have not affected the life of man on earth as much as this one solitary life. This 
is Jesus. And this is what we're going to be talking about in this chapter. How exciting. And I know you guys know much about Jesus because you go to Sunday school. But let's take this on historic perspective. This happened all the way, the way God said it would. And they should have known and anticipated it because all the prophecies point to this one event in time from the Bible. In fact, the Old Testament, you can take these scriptures. And if you look here, I have like five or six scriptures on, on every, every page. And all these pages, all these pages, up to 355 prophecies of Jesus' first coming, of his coming as that babe in a manger and his life. 353 prophecies and maybe even more. Plus there's five times more prophecies about his second coming. Or, um, now his second coming, it could be any day. So we know that he's coming again. The whole book of the Bibles, of all the books in the Bible and all the scriptures, everything points to Jesus. And all these things, prophecies were made thousands of years before Jesus was born, Pro um, prophesied exactly as they would happen. Can you imagine that? So let's talk about these, these prophecies as we go. Um, the world, in your book it says, the world needs a savior. Well, God picked um, exactly the man from whom um, the, his, the descendants, his descendants would bring forth this Messiah. And his name was Abraham. Abraham and his son, Isaac. We studied about them in depth. On to Jacob, whose name would be changed to Israel. Wow. Yes, we did go over this, but it's all about Jesus, of, of the prophetic line of his ancestors. We're talking about Jesus' ancestors. So a few of the prophecies in the Bible would point to not only Jesus' ancestry, but also to all the things that would happen to him. Let's look at just a few here. In Genesis 3, it says that he would, um, that a Messiah would come forth, come forth from the seed of a woman. This means that Father God would be the Father. And the seed would be, the human seed would be a virgin. Amazing prophecy that way back in Genesis this would happen. And then the identity, his identity would be, which should be known through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, down to Judah, all is prophesied through the tribe. Not only that, through the descendants of David, King David, who's descended from Abraham, all in the Bible. Um, in Isaiah, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And that is pro prophetic about what would happen in Bethlehem. Oh, and yes, the birthplace Bethlehem was prophesied. Um, in back back in Isaiah, it also says, "O oh, Bethlehem Ephrata, who are too little among the tribes, from you shall come forth a ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from old, ancient of days. He would be born in Bethlehem." Also, also says that he would be sinless in Isaiah 53, 9. He had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. He was sinless. Other prophecies that he would be exiled for a while or as a refugee in Egypt. And what happens? Yes, they, um, Joseph and Mary and Jesus leave for a while into Egypt. That Jesus would enter the temple in Malachi, it says, suddenly come forth his temple. Well, the temple had to be there. And yes, it was. Herod's temple was there. And Jesus did en enter the temple. And then that he would have um, uh, um, uh, someone to prepare, a prophet to prepare the way. And his name would be named John the Baptist. And Isaiah says, that basically tells about in the wilderness, 
in the wilderness, it says, um, to prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway from our God. And this was through John prophesied just like it happened. Miracles, that he would do miracles. In Isaiah, it says, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame man shall leap like a deer, the tongue of the mute sing for joy. That he'd be coming riding on a donkey. In Zechariah, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. He is humbled, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt. Isaiah, or Zechariah 9 9. He would be betrayed by a friend. We know that he was by Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples. In Psalm 41, 9, it says, Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate bread at my table, has lifted his heel against me. And it even was prophesied that the exact amount that he would be paid to be thrown into the temple as blood money would be 30 pieces of silver. Huh. That he would... Um, that he, his suffering would be great. And it prophesies exact things that he would suffer. In Isaiah 50, um, verse 6, says, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. It sounds exactly, it's exactly what happened to Jesus. And that they would gamble for his clothing. In Psalm twenty-two eighteen, they prophesied was prophesied that they would cast lots for his clothing that he would be hated and mocked in isaiah 53 3 he says he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows acquainted with grief and he, it was also prophesied that he would open not his mouth to defend himself and that he was oppressed and afflicted that he opened not his mouth he didn't defend himself. He could have called angels down to defend himself. And then he was crucified. Do you know that crucifixion at the time of the prophecy was written was, wasn't even invented? It wouldn't be till 500 years later that Rome would crucify people. So here, but in Psalm 22, it's, it, it shows a picture exactly what would happen. Um, that they have pierced my hands and my feet. It's just a whole picture in the Old Testament of Jesus being crucified in the future. Uh, that his bones would not be broken. In crucifixion, they would always break their bones. But Jesus would not. Just as prophesied in Psalm 34, 20, he would keep all his bones, not one of them is broken. And they even was prophesied the exact words that Jesus would say on the cross. Jesus prophesied, said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22, 1. 1,000 years before was prophesied that these would be his words. He, that he would be buried in a rich man's tomb. Huh. And he was of Joseph of Arathemia. And that he would be raised from the dead. Isaiah 53, that he would raise from the grave. So many prophecies. So much. They should have known, but they didn't. But do you know, there's five times more prophecies about the Messiah coming again. And yet, the world, are they anticipating him? Not so much, are they? But you and I are, because we know the time is close for him to take us home. Because we know what's going on in Israel, and a lot of the prophecies have come to pass, and many more to come. But the time, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son. Amen. So let's go on with the story, his story.